to you by Kellogg Cereals. The best to you each morning from Kellogg's of Vital Creek. And now let's all play What's My Line? From New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you. On my left, the star of the hit Broadway musical Baker Street, the wonderful actor, Mr. Martin Gaines. Thank you, Dorothy. What were you doing in London? I was visiting the Prince. There was a command performance, and Philip never looked handsomer. Command performance of what? Uh, flying machines. Oh. Movies. Film, you know. How did she look? She wasn't there. Oh, she my was bachelor. On my left, the woman who's not going to London this summer, but instead appearing in a new play called Mrs. Dolly Finds a Lover, my wife, Arlene Francis. And now, the best next-door neighbor a girl ever had and one of the finest pool watchers in the business, Mr. Bennett Thurf. It's fun watching you in the pool. Thank she you. looks very good in a bikini. <laughs> Uh, if John Daly comes out holding his arm tonight, I want to explain to you what happened to him just before the show. Uh, the mounted policeman we have outside the stage door has a horse that loves sweets. And every week, John has been giving this horse a donut, which the horse enjoyed very much. But tonight, when he gave the horse the donut, the horse bit him. And John was very hurt in more ways than one. And went over to the policeman and said, why did this horse bite me tonight when I gave him his donut? And the horse said, we, the policeman said, I've changed horses, and this is a horse of a different color. And that's why... Well, that's our neighbor. And that's why he's going to come out holding his arm. Here he is, John Charles Daly. the time, as you all know, graduation and commencements, and you have just seen a good reason why the students, the faculty, the parents, and the friends at Washington uh, Jefferson are going to have a wonderful graduation day next Saturday, because Bennett's going to be the commencement speaker, and you're going to get an honorary degree, right? Yes, sir. Good. What degree, John? Doctor of Humane Letters. <laughs> <laughs> Now, it's a wonderful time of year. We had a fine graduation at uh, my school, Tilton School in New Hampshire yesterday, and met our new headmaster, Dr. Robert Butler, and I gave out a special degree uh, on Friday night, Miss USA, which is a thing that Bennett can't get, in spite of his power. <laughs> Martin, it's very nice. I'm a little bit uh, hoarse tonight. Oh, thank you, John. <laughs> Well, we go back to two slices. That's back to two slices. But we have uh, some wonderful occupations. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before our panel a little bit later in the show. And we'll meet our first challenger after this. And now to meet our first challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Joan? Dempsey? Fly, right? <laughs> All right. Um, Miss or Mrs. Klein? Mrs. Mrs. Klein, where are you from, ma'am? Los Angeles, California. Los Angeles, California. All right, Mrs. Klein, may I present the panel? And now would you join me over here, please, ma'am? And we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is.
We can tell you that Mrs. Klein is salaried and deals in a service, and we will put to work immediately Martin Gable. Thank you, John. Mrs. Klein, you have that lean, Hungry. athletic look. <laughs> is what you do have an outdoor job? No. Nope. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Francis. That's your lean, athletic yes. look for you. You can be lean and athletic and work indoors. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> Very good. Well, I'm lean. Could we come to you for your service? Yes. Do you have anything whatsoever to do with the motion picture industry? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Klein, do you work for a non-profit making organization? Yes. Is the, is the organization that you work for some governmental job, either local, state, or national? Yes. Is it national? No. That's three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Mm, is it uh, city rather than state? No. That's four down and six to go, Mr. Gable. Could any member of this panel uh, benefit from the consequences of your job? <laughs> Could. Yes. You Under could. the proper set of circumstances, we would agree that you could. <laughs> would we have to be even poorer than we are in order to uh, uh, acquire this benefit? No. No. That's five down and five to go, Miss Francis. Mrs. Klein, do you wear anything special in your job other than ordinary dresses? Yes. Is it a uniform of some kind? Mm, yes. Is now, we're using uniform here in its broadest sense. I don't want to mislead you. Yes, you do, John. <laughs> <laughs> you know you do. Therefore, the uniform would not be immediately identifiable? As a uniform. As a uniform of a specific job. Could this uniform be worn <laughs> by other people? Yes. Mean doing is it more a cover job than an uncovered? No. Is it more a, a, a coverall than an identifiable uniform? Well, taking the language that you used to mean exactly what you said, we will agree that it uh, could be described generally as a coverall rather than a glockenspiel on the Murgatroyd. I think you don't want to tell me all that it covers, John. Uh, you, do you work indoors then, uh, Mrs. Klein? Yes. Could you work in houses? Occasionally. For the most part, you do work for the government. Would it be a... Uh, state. The state. Oh, for the state. Well, state government. The state. What? No. No, we didn't city. say that. We didn't. We <clears throat> it wasn't city and it wasn't national, we said. Yeah, right. but it could be county. It could be... That's right. Um, do you detect something in your job? I mean, as an active uh, digger out of facts and an undercover agent, a private eye. Oh, not eye. as an undercover agent, no. But did she, does she detect anything that might be wrong uh, in her particular service? Yeah, I would say we would agree yes. Could it be that. something wrong in utilities? In utilities. That's six down and four to go, <laughs> Mr. Sir. <laughs> Mrs. Klein, in the other service that you perform, is there anything living involved in the way of animals, fish, or insects? Animals, fish, or Birds insects? Birds or insects? <laughs> You're We'd say that it could. Could, It yes. could, but stress could. Have you anything to do, then, with either sanitation or health? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Seven down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. Mrs. Klein, I would like to get back to this so-called coverall that you wear. Uh, does it cover most of you from the neck down? Yes. Uh, is it unnecessary for you to wear anything on your head in conjunction with this? Do you go bareheaded? Yes. While working indoors? Yes. Is your job sedentary? Yes. Uh, is this coverall ever seen at the sort of graduation at which Bennett is going to speak? Yes. 
coverall. Yeah. Is it a robe? Yes. yes. Are you a judge? Yes. yes. Mrs. Fine was appointed to the Los Angeles Judicial District by Governor Edmund Pat Brown, as we call him, and she sits in, in the uh, small ju jurisdiction of small claims and traffic cases in that uh, area. Criminal no? court, civil. No. But, Martin, right. to make you feel better about the lean and athletic look, I think it's very interesting that Mrs. Klein, before entering law school, traveled in Europe as a member of Buster Crabbe's swimming team. Ah. So you, you were in the... I was thinking of her former profession. You were thinking of the former profession. John, if it's not bad form, I'd like to say that I'm overcome with admiration for Dorothy's power of analysis. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. oh my. Yeah, it, 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 Thank it, it, you, Martin. Very good. We would, by but, your courtesy and generosity. <laughs> we still feel we did rather well. We got you seven down and three to go, didn't we, Judge? Yes, indeed. Thank you very much. It's Thank nice you. to have you with us. It's been a pleasure to be here. Better give Bennett something. He knew that tonight we'd have something talking horse, huh? Oh, that's all right. Never mind. Let's see what we can do with our next challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? <laughs> Mr. Hoffman. <laughs> Ron Hoffman? Correct. Right. Where are you from, sir? Atlantic City. Atlantic City. Nice to have you with us. Mr. Hoffman, may I present our panel? Now, would you join me over here, sir, and we will uh, let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. tell you that Mr. Hoffman is self-employed and deals in a service, and we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Bennett, sir. Mr. Hoffman, since John has just come back from the Miss USA contest, can I eliminate the Miss America contest from your activities? I believe so. <laughs> Does the service that you perform uh, go to human beings? No. Yes. Well, it does. We would agree that the human beings could ultimately benefit from the service if it is well performed, yes. Are there animals or fish involved in this service? Yes. Uh, is it fish? No. No. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is it animals, Mr. Hoffman? Tell the truth. Well, we're using these terms very broadly, oh, yes. as you understand. Is it a broad animal? <laughs> Are these, uh, of course, these animals, I, I don't like to go into the gory details, but uh, eventually, uh, are the, have these animals gone to their reward before you pass them on to the public? No, they have not gone to their I'm reward. So That's two down and eight to go, Mr. Gable. Mr. Hoffman, you perform your service on the beach at Atlantic City. Well, you're speaking of the waterfront, Martin. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it... It, uh, would your work be classified as entertainment? Yes. Is it something that you do uh, on either the boardwalk or the beach uh, yes. before a crowd of people? Do yes. you do it on one of the piers in Atlantic City? Yes. Would it be either the steel pier or the million dollar pier? Yes. Uh, would it be, is a seal an animal, John? It is, we're using the term very broadly, actually, actually. It's any living species when we speak of animal, but fish have been excluded. Have you anything to do with a stunt off either of those piers? Off either of those piers? On, uh, sorry, you said yes, off, right. Martin. That's three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. You meant on, didn't you, dear? <laughs> <laughs> you do something on the pier yes. with some animals. Yes. Are these four-legged animals? No. 
That's four down and six to go. And remember, I don't want to be called on this. We have accepted your description of animal in its broadest possible sense, and I don't want to be accused no of misleading right. you. Yeah. Mr. Sir. We, we've eliminated those diving horses. Is that what you're thinking of? Mm. I was thinking of those horses that dive off the pier. As well as but talk, I know. No, they don't talk. <laughs> they just eat crullers. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Huffman, do your, these living things that you deal with uh, are they able ever to leave the ground? Yes. Are they able to fly? No. That makes it five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Mr. Hoffman, are any of your um, widely described animals human animals? No. Six down and four to go, Mr. Gable. Are these animals aquatic? No. Seven down and three to go, Miss Francis. If I may be forgiven, uh, since you've just come from a beauty contest, John, uh, I have to get back to the legs again. They're not four-legged. Are they... Do they have legs? Yes. Oh, one-legged. Do they... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 may I we have a conference? You may have 15 one. seconds for a conference. He's got those trained fleas. Maybe. Well, they're animals. Sure they are. Yes, yes they are. They're, they're animals, but we haven't gotten into insects. Are they small enough to put in my hair? <laughs> yes. Is Bennett indeed right? Do you have something to do with trained fleas? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to tell all the cards over. That's what Mr. Hoffman does, is train fleas. And this is why I kept warning you. I thought the question originally was asked in terms of animal, vegetable, yeah. mineral. That's right. And it was it's in the animal. Living yeah. species. Can't fleas fly? No, they jump. They jump. <laughs> and Martin, you, you were very I never close. had any, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> Mr. Hoffman is going to, to uh, he has a flea circus, and he's going to open on, on the uh, million dollar pier on the 15th day of John, June. John, I had a very expensive education at various preparatory schools and universities. I always thought an insect was something different from an animal. No, but I kept saying we were talking about animals in the broadest sense, Martin. We use it animal, vegetable, or mineral. It belonged in the animal world as a basic division, a living species, and I... I reluctantly understand that. Said, said it over and over again. <laughs> Let me tell you one more thing about Mr. Hoffman's circus. He's, he, he comes originally from Long Beach in California, so he's given it a western flavor, and it's called the, the Coyote Gulch Flea Show, right? Coyote, coyote Gulch, Gulch Flea Show. <laughs> the Coyote Gulch Flea Show. Thanks very much, Mr. Hoffman. Nice to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from us. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which my friends are always blindfolded. Are the blindfolds in place, panel? Yes. Yes, yes John. Good. Will you enter mystery challenger and sign in, please? As you know, a different form of questioning, one question at a time, in turn moving clockwise, and we will begin with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, are you in entertainment? Are, are you in entertainment? Yes, darling. <laughs> Mr. Gable. Are, are you in the movies? Yes, darling. <laughs> Arlene. <laughs> Have you also been in the theater? Naturally, darling. <laughs> Bennett? Are you at present on the boards on, in a New York show? No. One down to nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, I tell you, it's either she or the best imitation I've ever heard. <laughs> what? Do you think it's an imitation? May we have a conference? No. Uh, Do you no, all think it's an imitation? You? No. Yeah. Yeah. No. You I think it, it's the real McCoy. Is it Saluna Bankhead? Yes. <laughs> Not now on 
the boards, but uh, in, the, in the cinema, in Die, Die, Darling. My darling. My darling. Die, Die, My you know, Darling. No, I thought you, uh, congratulations, I thought you'd get me at once. Because, you know, I was on here once before and I went, ah, oh, ah, and Dorothy, of course, got it once. So I have <laughs> only one other note in my voice, you see. But I called Carol Channing tonight, but she wasn't in, because she used to give a, an impersonation to me in a nightclub act, and she was quite wonderful. So I thought, well, I'll just try and get it, because whenever anyone impersonates me, they always make me feel as if I was throwing up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, oh, darling. So I thought that I might get away with one or two. So thank you, darling, for being so discreet. <laughs> well, I must say this. I think you had them puzzled, simply because it, it, uh, it well, was Well, I so frightened really myself. Really I hope I frightened them that much in the movies. Well, it is a great uh, joy, and I must say, an honor to have you with us. Thank I, you, darling. I read somewhere recently, and would have you confirm it, that um, the late Sir Winston Churchill attended a play that you were in uh, five times. Well, yes, he did. Uh, that was a... I met him when he was laying bricks, if you remember that part of his yes. career. He rather, and, you know, he wasn't uh, his son was setting up, he ever did, but he was more or less an obscurity for what he be later became and what he was before. And uh, he just adored the second act. And once my, I had to get up on a table, Edna Best was close to with me. She's a wonderful actress and a great performer. And I had to step off this chair and my shoe went right up in the box. And Winston Churchill's box, he threw it back on the stage to me, but I, I never wore it again. I kept uh, oh, it. Oh, I think what a wonderful keepsake. <laughs> But thank you very much for giving us a Sunday night. I know you've got the fourth gift. I guess it'll have to have five tonight, because I'll get it at once. Thank you very much for coming. Mr. John. contestant after this word. And now, a final contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Jean Karch, right? All right. Is it most on the All right, panel, where are you from? Minneapolis, Minnesota. Mrs. Karsh from Minneapolis, Minnesota. And now will you join me over here? And panel, you're on your metal, because once again, we'll see how fast you can work. Thank you. We'll tell you that uh, as soon as we've told the folks at home what Mrs. Kosh's real occupation is, <laughs> we will tell you that Mrs. Kosh is self-employed and deals in a product, and we will begin with Arlene Francis. Is it a useful product, Mrs. Kosh? Yes. Is it a product I might have? Yes. Is it a product that I would have indoors? Yes. If I had this product, might I possibly put it in the kitchen? You might. Is it a product that can be found in other areas of the house? Yes. Is it small enough to hold in my hand? Like so? Both N hands. No. <laughs> <laughs> One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Koch, is this product consumable? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, would I have one of these, Miss Kosh, do you think? I beg your pardon, I didn't Could hear. I have one of these things? Yes, you, you might. might. Mm -hmm. uh, well, if it's so large that Arlene couldn't hold it, I'm sure I couldn't. That's uh, right. <laughs> and, uh, uh, so would it be, uh, on view if someone made a little tour of your house, if you had one of these things? Would it be Perhaps readily it seen? It could be. Wouldn't be hidden it in the attic or be. the cellar. We just say it could be. It could be seen. Uh, it might be, it could it, be. Do, uh, could you sit on it or lean on it or anything to rest? You could. You, you could, could, but you wouldn't. But you wouldn't. Right. Mr. Gable? Does it have anything to do with your health? No. That's four down and six to go. Does it have movable parts? Yes. Uh, does it do something? No. No. Would you help it? No, I'm going to put all the cards over. Oh, it's uh, Mrs. Karsh sells safes. She is the uh, owner something. and operator of the Floyd Lock and Safe Company in, in Minneapolis. And handles all kinds of things. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm afraid I've used up all the time panels, so I will t take the liberty of saying good night for all of us. And Bennett, they're lucky at Washington Jefferson to see you next Saturday. And thanks to all of you for being with us on What's My Life. <laughs>